The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD available from SDC Publications. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw the tool slide. This is project 4.5 in your book. I've already made the layers that uh, I'm instructed to make and I have a miter box drawn right here in white and this actually came in with my prototype but actually it's just a rectangle that started at uh, absolute coordinate 5 comma 5 and then I believe it was 11 comma uh, 8.25 to get to this corner here anyway that that'd be large enough to fit all three views in then we draw a 45 degree line uh, we just draw this six inches long um, that should be enough length that we will be able to project up from our views and through this <clears throat> I've already set visible as my current layer, so I'm going to start by drawing the front view. And I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle that's 6.25 wide by 0.88 tall. So what I'm going to do is come over here and uh, into my draw panel and pick the rectangle command. I'm going to pick on that and I'm prompted to specify where the first corner of that rectangle is and I'm going to come right over here and I have object snaps on so I'm going to pick right there and snap at that corner. Now I'm going to move over in the direction sort of that I want to go and remember that my distance is 6.25 so I'm going to type 6.25 comma and then the height which is 0.88 and press enter and at that point I have my base drawn. Now if you look at this you can see that there are some angled corners on either side of that and those are called chamfers. So let's place those chamfers in the drawing. If you come up here and you look in your modify uh, panel you may see fillet instead of chamfer because that's usually what you see first is fillet but if you pick on the down arrow next to that you'll see the chamfer command. Alright so what we have to do before we use the chamfer command is tell AutoCAD the distance and the angle for the chamfer and if I look right over here I can see that my distance is 0.25 it says 2 times 0.25 that's because it's 0.25 on this side and it's 0.25 on the left side and then my angle is 2 times 45 so this is a 45 degree angle and this is a 45 alright now remember I've already selected on the chamfer command and so if I look at my command line and I look right across here I see a bunch of options but one of those options is angle. You see that right down there where I'm pointing to? So I'm going to pick on angle and at this point you would expect AutoCAD to prompt you for the angle but it doesn't. It actually wants the chamfer length first so I'm going to type 0.25 and press enter. Now it gets around to asking me for the angle which is 45. I'm going to type 45 and press enter and now it says select the first line. Well the first line should be your top line because that's where the 0.25 is going to be measured is on the top line. And then it asks to select the second line so that would be this vertical line right here so I'm going to pick on that. And so what it created is a chamfer that's 0.25 in this direction and it's 45 degrees. Now because it's 45 degrees both of those distances are actually 0.25. Now in AutoCAD if you press enter it will return you to your last command so if I'm going to press enter right now and that takes me back to the chamfer command and AutoCAD remembers that the length is 0.25 and that the angle is 0.45 so all I need to do is pick on this top line again and then pick on this line over here on the side pick right there and I get the chamfer in there. Alright, um, I'm going to have uh, two visible lines that stick up that represents the sides of this inclined angled feature that we see right here that sits on top of the base and so I'm going to place those two lines and to do that I'm going to start by drawing a construction line just using the line command. I'm going to pick on the line command and I'm going to snap to that endpoint right there and I'm going to come straight up. Now I have uh, polar tracking turned on which is this tool right down here. Uh, you could also turn on your ortho tool. You can't have them both on at the same time. So I'm going to pick on my polar tracking tool. And one of my polar tracking angles is 90. So if I move my cursor until it snaps to, you know, going straight up, I'm at 90 degrees. Now, the height of this, I'm not entirely certain what it ought to be. So I'm just going to draw a line. I'm just going to come up a ways and pick. And then I'm going to press escape. All right. Now I'll determine the height of this later and the height is going to actually happen 
after I draw the right side view, I'm going to project the top of the right side view across to get the height over here. And uh, the reason for that is I really don't have a, a dimension for the height of this until I do some construction of the uh, right side view. All right, so in looking at my sketch over here, it would indicate that if I were to offset this line here two inches to the left, that that would give me the uh, side of this inclined feature. So I'm going to go up here to my Modify panel and find the Offset command. And I'm prompted at this point to specify the offset distance, and I need to offset it 2 inches. So I'm just going to type 2 and press Enter. It asks me to select the offset to op the object offset, so I'm going to pick on this line and then just move to the left anywhere and pick, and then press Escape. All right, so there's the right-hand side of that feature, and now I want to offset that 2.25. So I'm going to go back to my offset command. For the offset distance, I'm going to type 2.25 and press Enter. I'm going to select that line and move anywhere to the left of that line, and then I'm going to do a left click or a pick. All right, and press Escape. Now I can pick on this line and erase it out. Just go pick on the erase command, or you could even press delete if you wanted to. Okay, so now I know I'm going to have to trim the bottoms of these lines off, and so let's just go ahead and do the trim command. Uh, if we come up here, we should be able to find the trim command somewhere in here. Oh, I know why I can't find it. It's because I've used extend. So what I need to do, I'm going to go to extend, pick on the down arrow, and go find trim. Now, it's a good idea every time, as soon as you pick on trim, just press enter. And what this does, it makes everything a cutting edge. So since I've pressed enter, all I need to do is pick at the end of that line and pick at the end of that line because AutoCAD recognizes this top line already as a cutting edge. Now I'm going to press escape. 